So, do I start with the good news, yay, or the bad news? I don't know. Hey guys, I'm Wendy Valencia. Welcome back. And if you are new to my channel, go ahead and click that red subscribe button down below. And then go ahead and click that bell notification icon and you will be immediately notified every time I upload. I got some amazing news and I got some seriously crappy news. And legitimately, I don't know whether I should start with the amazing news or start with crappy news. So I always like to end on a positive note. So I am going to start with the crappy news. So as I have talked about several times, I have been appealing a decision with my health insurance company. I'm not gonna tell you which insurance company I have because I'm not that kind of person, but it's a good plan. I mean, it's a really good plan. Let me give you the backstory. I had surgery in Mexico in June of 2015. I did all of the paperwork that you were supposed to do. I contacted my insurance company to let them know I was going to have it. And they told me that it would be covered, no problem. While in Mexico, what we have to do is we would pay for everything out of pocket and then we would sit the, submit the paperwork with the receipts and doctor's notes or whatever, and we would get reimbursed. And generally anything over about a thousand dollars, they would always reject and you'd have to get additional paperwork and, and then it would be fine. So I had this surgery and the surgery ended up costing 16,500 ish dollars based on the conversion rate at that particular time. It was a substantial surgery. I spent four days in the hospital. It was medically necessary. I had gone to numerous doctors and they all agreed that I needed the surgery. And I had done all of the paperwork and everything leading up to the surgery. So I had this surgery. We paid, you know, the 16,000 ish dollars out of pocket. And within two weeks of getting out of the hospital, I had all the paperwork gathered together and submitted. And of course it got rejected and I knew it would. And they sent me a list of documents that I would need. Fine, no problem. So I got those documents and I resubmitted and they rejected it again and sent me a whole new list of documents I needed. This list was a lot harder to get because it was like surgical notes, anesthesia notes. And so I went to the hospital and tried to get those the hospital basically told me that those records are considered property of the hospital itself and by Mexican law, they could not release those records to me. They could release them to my insurance company as long as I signed a document, but they could not release them to me. So they needed my insurance company to request the, the documents. No problem. I had a letter from my insurance company that said I needed the documents. And they said, no, the request needed to go through a certain channel of communication from my insurance company to the local insurance company in Mexico. And then they would request it from the hospital and then it would reverse order back for them to get the records. And the hospital said, absolutely, they would provide the records with no problem as long as my insurance did what they had to do. And herein lies the problem. I re contacted the insurance company and they said they would request them. And I waited a month and they didn't request them. So I contacted the insurance company again and they said they would request them. And they didn't request them. And I waited a month and they said they would request them. And you get the idea. So this went on for a year. So we were kind of in a holding pattern. Every time we reached out to the insurance company, it started the clock and they needed six months with no communication to close out the claim. But so every time we called them, it just restarted and added another six months and they would not consider the claim closed until either they got the documents they wanted and made an official rejection or an uh, approval or six months passed with no communication. And after a year of going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth with the company, we didn't know what to do. I got frustrated. Every time I called, they told me they would reach out. They never did. I, I talked to managers. I got names. And unfortunately for me, because my day job is in law enforcement, I know a lot about making copious notes. So every time I talked to them, knowing after knowing from the beginning that this was going to be an uphill battle, 
I would make notes. I'd write down who I talked to, what time I talked to them. If I got a call reference number, I'd write that down and I kept a log and I kept it going from the very beginning. So after a year, we got really frustrated and I started getting mad and I turned into not nice Wendy. I bet each one of you has it inside you, but it's the part that like your, your head splits like right down the middle and your skull opens up and this like alien comes out I don't let her out very often (laughs) not nice Wendy came out a couple of times on the phone but I didn't say anything that would have gotten me in trouble I just there was a lot of yelling a lot because it was almost seventeen thousand dollars we were talking about and I tried to explain that to them and this was all going on right I guess right before we started the Dave Ramsey plan. So then we decided to call an attorney because clearly nobody was willing to help us and we wanted our money back and we deserved it. I mean, everything, we had followed all the procedures and done everything. So we contacted an attorney and we're like, what do we do? And so the attorney said he would write a letter and he wrote a letter and submitted it to my insurance company. And it was a strongly worded letter that was basically like, make a decision. This is not her fault. You need to decide because clearly you're not going to get the records from Mexico. We needed them to reject it so I could file an appeal with the insurance company that was basically like, please make a decision on what you have because you have all we can get. The insurance company responded to my attorney with a strongly worded letter that basically said they had met their end of the bargain and they lied. I mean, they they full on lied. And I had the documentation to prove that they lied. We filed the appeal. I figured that would probably get rejected initially. And it did. And so we actually filed another appeal with my insurance company thinking, okay, they now are well aware of the situation. They're going to have to side in my favor. Nope, not even a little bit. The final appeal with my insurance company, the answer was no. Okay, I do have another course of action. I filed an appeal with the Office of Personnel Management for the federal government. And that appeal, the Office of OPM hires special doctors to look over your stuff and see if the appeal should be paid or not. And basically the decision is whatever OPM says is what happens. So I was like, okay, they're going to see everything. And in my letter, It specifically said at the very end, I am not asking you to decide on what I have. I understand that I don't have all the records I need to have. I am asking you that you require my insurance company to do their job and get the records because Mexican law would not allow me to have the records. And I made that very clear. I have actually a letter in writing from the hospital in Mexico that says that. All I ask that OPM do is push the insurance company to do their job. But here's the thing. The insurance company, if they didn't get the records, they could legitimately claim that they didn't have enough records to make a decision. So why would they make the effort to get the records? Because if they have the records, they're going to have to pay me the money. The hospital's been paid. I paid them. So why would they try to get the records? Makes logical sense, right? So that's all I asked OPM do. I get a letter back from OPM about a month later that says, I'm sorry, there are not enough records here for us to make a decision on your case. What? Did they even read my appeal? So needless to say, I got on the phone with OPM and I left them a message because I could never actually talk to a person at OPM. Never, not even once. And basically said, in my letter, I said this, 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 and this. I have asked that you insist that the insurance company get the records. That's all I'm asking for. Ask them to get the records. I said, that's that's all I'm asking of you. Give me a fair chance to get this insurance claim done. So I hear nothing, I hear nothing. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna have to put this appeal in writing. And about, I, I had it on my list of things to do. And then I came home from work one day and there was a letter from OPM. And they had sent my records to a doctor again to evaluate what I had. And I knew there weren't enough records in there. So of course, they denied it. Why? Because half of the documents to prove that I needed the surgery were not there. 
they told me in that letter that there were no other options for appeal. I could not appeal again. I could not discuss the issue. The matter was final. So my only recourse was to take legal action. Legitimately, that thought crossed my mind, but our attorney told us very early on that for a $17,000 claim, it, we would spend so much more in legal fees that we would never get the money back. The thing I hate the most, other than the fact that a doctor, multiple doctors have told me that I needed to have this done. Doctors in the U.S., and in Mexico, all told me, you know, it's not like I jumped on a plane and flew down to Mexico to have a surgery because it was cheaper. I did it because I was living there. And the hospital I was at was fantastic. I mean, it was, you know, a total like first world hospital. It was beautiful. Long story, really long. We're stuck. We're not getting that money. So we are out of pocket for that surgery. 100%. We get nothing, nothing. And so that's, you know, almost $17,000 that we did have debt on that we're going to be paying and there's no reimbursement coming and that's super frustrating to me. And, you know, I, when I, when I got that letter this week, it just, it was crushing and irritating. So Mauricio wants me to write a letter to my congressman. I just, I'm, 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 I've kind of lost the fight in it. I, I don't feel like I'm going to win. So what good does it do to write a letter to my congressman? So let's end this on a happy note. Yesterday, Mauricio got a phone call. He got a job and he got an awesome job, a super awesome job. And it will likely lead into a career in cybersecurity. And we are so thrilled. So, so, so thrilled. So you are about to see some huge changes in our budget. Now, he actually starts on Monday. They asked him how quickly he could start. And he was like, I didn't start any time. And so they're going to have him start on Monday. I expect it'll be several weeks before his paychecks actually start kicking in. And so fortunately, we are a full month ahead. And he has already earned the money for August. So whatever money he earns from now on, We'll go to September and we will just continue doing the one month ahead. So in August, you will not likely see large payments to debt, just our, our normal standard payments. But come September, it's gonna be changing. I am so excited. Yeah, this, this is legitimately a great thing for us. This will allow us to, you know, eventually move out of my parents' house into our own place, hopefully really nearby, so we can still be around for my parents. And so we are so excited. I mean, it's static. You have no idea. You have no idea. It's like a huge weight has been lifted. Hey, you didn't tell him your news. Lost my tooth. My third tooth. Your third tooth? Uh-huh. Oh, girly, these bangs are driving me crazy. Mauricio wants to grow out Melina's bangs, but I don't think I can handle it anymore. Your eyes look beautiful. If you're new to my channel, make sure you click on my big laughing face, and I will put up two videos for you to keep on watching. This one is my latest one, and this one is one YouTube picked out just for you. I'll see you in the next one. Melina wants to come in and say see ya. See ya!